Jim Cramer is known for his bad calls, and here he is advising Mad Money viewers that Bear Stearns is fine in the spring of 2008. Just six days later, Bear Stearns would fall 90% and get bailed out at $2 per share. Okay, Peter writes, should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. Do not take your money out. This is really, look, if there's one takeaway other than a plus 400 somebody, Bear Stearns is not in trouble. I mean, if anything, they're more likely to be taken over. Don't move your money from Bear. That's just being silly. Don't be silly. He's not saying literally, I'm asking you to buy Bear Stearns. For that, you'd have to go back a full seven weeks before the stock completely collapsed. I'm asking uh, people who are uh, watching this video to buy Bear Stearns. <laughs> now, that was seven weeks before it collapsed. Here's a clip from 2010 where Elon Musk brings up his Kramer call and says he's a contraindicator and responds to Kramer saying the Tesla IPO is, quote, not a smart investment. There are a lot of people who have looked at your IPO who have told me, you know what, I'm not sure that this is a smart investment. Our own Jim Cramer yesterday said, I'm not sure that Tesla has a business plan that's going to work. It's not a smart investment. What do you say to the skeptics who look at where Tesla is, the money that you're raising, and they say, you know what, they've got a nice roadster, but they don't have a good business plan? Well, I think, you know, uh, you know Jim, I'd say, yeah, sure, Jim, you know, we're no best stones, uh, but I think we're going to do okay. <laughs> you know, Jim, I think, recommended best stones and layman and other things. So... Yeah, frankly, he's a contraindicator. On March 25th of this year, Jim Cramer said that the bear market is over, and since this call, the Nasdaq has dropped 17%, the S&P 11%, interest rates have been raised, and inflation is still at all-time highs. Maybe, Jim, you make the case, and you can make the case, that everything the professor said is known. That's it's it. It's all in the market. That's it. That's Jay why Powell has messaged. He's told you. That's why he's told we you what's coming. To, have you looked? There are 600 companies that came public in the last 18 months. I mean, there's like seven on the trade north of nine bucks. I mean, I, this is the bear market, just like 2001, except for we have a, a rates much lower. And Brian, you remember those days? I mean, those companies were all jokes. A lot of the companies. I'm looking at all the companies that are under 10. Many of them are actually making money. We are in some weird market that it's a bear market and no one called it as a bear. And I think the bear market is over. Wow, and that's a big call. Brian Zelsky, react to that. Well, I think the bear market has been over for a while when you have over 70% of the stocks in the S&P 500 down more than 10%, and you have 50% down more than 50%, I'm sorry, 10%. Uh, but I think the, the key thing that is difference between 2001 is, remember, was we were by the dip craze big time when we were still so focused on one area, that being technology, I think the market's actually done a really good job diversifying not itself. But remember, too, the, the interest rate scenario goes up because the economy is improving. And that should be very, right. very good. Remember, stocks lead earning, which leads the economy. And so it's already in the right. market. We already know this stuff. And this incessant need for everybody to know everything all the time, Scott, the Fed did a wonderful job last week kind of mapping this out. So we know the chart path. Now let's invest accordingly. And that's why the market's going up. Here is Kramer saying that you can get 35 to 40 percent on Ethereum when it was almost at 3K. Since then, Ethereum has gone on to drop 30 percent. This is like, you know, I, we're talking money, so it's OK to yeah. say, hey, listen, made money. Uh, but I think Ethereum is terrific. I'm a believer. And I think that you could easily get 35, 40 percent. Moving on to the next call. Last year, Jim Kramer displayed his magnificent seven stocks. And to date, six have been killed, with the only one left being Tesla. There are thousands of stocks where earnings still matter and matter a lot. But then there are a handful of high-profile growth names where they just don't seem to mean a thing. I have a list of the most impervious ones. Tonight, I'm going to reveal them. I'm calling them the Magnificent Seven. These are seven companies where buyers don't seem to care how well the underlying companies are doing. They just want to own the stocks regardless. The Magnificent Seven have detached themselves from all metrics except the metric of wonder. In each case, the thesis is so powerful that it overwhelms any mundane attempt to figure out what the business might be worth. What matters is that every day seems like a buying opportunity, whether the stock is up or down. The first member of the Magnificent Seven? Hmm, Netflix. The earnings themselves are simply an abstraction for these thesis stocks. And any disappointment is simply one more reason to buy them. 
Netflix is down 61%, Roku 70%, Peloton 83%, Square 60%, PayPal 68%, and Zoom 65%. And finally, Tesla the past year is up 25%. Continuing with stock calls, in February of this year, Kramer tweeted, winning stocks I like, Upstart and Airbnb. Since then, Upstart's down about 80%, Airbnb 40%. In April of last year, when Coinbase just went public, Kramer endorsed the company, saying it's a $475 stock. Since going public, Coinbase is down over 80%. Now, I'd love it if you can get Coinbase in the low 300s, around 10 times sales. That seems unlikely. If you're willing to pay 15 times sales, uh, not unreasonable, then this is a $475 stock. That's the upper end of what I'd be willing to pay for a large position. Still, you've got my blessing to put on a decent position at the opening, maybe half of what you'd normally purchase in one go, and, and then buy more, but only if it comes in. The bottom line, if you, like me, well, then you're a big believer in cryptocurrency, and you will want to own Coinbase for the long haul. Coinbase isn't the only going public company Kramer has endorsed at all-time highs, only like clockwork to immediately drop mere hours after making his call. So Lyft went public in March of 2019, and since then, it's dropped to under $20 a share, down 75% from its all-time high and Kramer's call. So finally, we already mentioned Netflix, which Kramer endorsed last year, but he also tweeted in January of this year, Netflix, buy, only for the stock to tank 70%. So, I mean, just look at that tweet. Kramer says, buy Netflix and boom, six red candles, six days in a row. And I mean, that is actually hard to do. Like, even if you tried, you couldn't make worse calls than this. So many of the comments in response to these Kramer calls were simply about, how the hell is this guy still on TV? I mean, just his call from 2008 should have been enough. But nope, here we are, and Kramer is still at it. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that. There's a bunch more I could have thrown in, but I think you guys get the idea. Don't trust Kramer, and please subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.